Hello, I'm James Harvey, the Professor of Music Theory at the College of Southern Nevada with 5-Minute Music Theory. Let's start the timer and we're going to talk in this video about the first and most common type of 6-4 chord called the Cadential 6-4. The reason it's called the Cadential 6-4 is because it typically happens in what's called a cadence. Cadences we will get into in a few videos, but basically a cadence is musical punctuation. Cadences determine the ends of phrases, so they're very important. And uh, cadential 6 4s tend to happen during cadences. Now remember that 6 4s are not functional, so whenever you write 6 4 down, you need to write something else. And there's a lot of controversy, believe it or not, behind the uh, labeling of cadential 6 4s. I'm going to show you three ways, and then I'll show you which of those three ways of labeling that I prefer and that I think most music theory professors prefer as well. But there are three different ways, and we'll go through all of them. But let's talk first about what the cadential 6 4 is. It's specifically a tonic chord in second inversion. So that's a 6 4 chord followed by a dominant chord. That dominant chord could potentially have a seventh on it. And that actually goes for just about any chord that we're looking at that you could, could potentially have a seventh. But we're just going to look at these as triads. Now, the weird thing about these two chords is that both of these chords perform dominant functions. Even though that first chord appears to, to look like a tonic, it doesn't in any way perform a tonic function. And when you hear a cadential 6-4, you actually can hear the, um, the pole of that chord. And it's... Um, and the uh, tendency that it cre that it has that it creates that uh, it has an expectation when you hear it, and that expectation is to hear it go to dominant. So that's not tonic's job in any way. So this is a non-functional chord, and the way that it's written right now doesn't really explain what's going on. It just says tonic six four followed by dominant. So some people, and some by people I mean music theory students and professors. We'll use this system of labeling, which is a nice little compromise, because what, what this is saying is that it's a tonic chord that's in second inversion that then goes to a root position dominant, but both of them perform dominant functions. That's why the dominant is there with the bracket. I like this, and, and uh, I don't mind this uh, labeling, but the labeling that I prefer is this. And at first, when you first uh, learn about this concept, a lot of people aren't comfortable with this, but if you start by looking at these in this way, it's going to make your life a lot easier, I think. <laughs> um, so here's the labeling that I prefer for cadential 6-4s. It's a dominant 6-4 to a 5-3. Now, what's kind of weird about that is that th that first chord is not actually spelled like a dominant chord. It's just performing a dominant function. And what's happening is that there's a 6 and a 4 above the bass that then move down to a 5 and a 3. So let's take a look at what one of these looks like in um, SATB format. And then if you see it, it makes a lot more sense. So 6, 4, 5, 3. So in C major, we're looking at a, at a dom. It's not a dominant 6, 4. That's the confusing thing about this. It's actually spelled like a tonic 6, 4, which will have a G in the bass. And then I'll put the C in the tenor voice. That's our 4. And then I'll put, um, how about let's do the E in the alto voice and then the G. Remember, second inversion triads always have uh, the fifth doubled. So you can see the 4 and the 6 here above the bass. Those are going to resolve to a 5 and a 3 in the next chord. That's here and here. And I'll, in fact, I'll draw those lines so you can see those resolutions. The other notes just stay exactly in the same place, just like that. So that turns into a dominant triad. So although this isn't spelled like a dominant triad, what we're doing by, by labeling it this way is showing that both of these are dominant chords. It just happens to have a 6-4 that then resolves down to a 5-3. So again, this is what I prefer. But you might run across some um, instructors who don't even label them at all. I don't agree with that. But um, some of them that label it this way, which is I think is a nice compromise as well between the two methods. We put a bracket, and then underneath that, I'll move this so we can see what's uh, going on here. Underneath, we then put the dominant there. And that's a nice compromise between the two. But again, just to quickly summarize, cadential 6-4s are always a tonic 6-4 followed by a dominant. And we always have a 6-4 that resolves to a 5-3. And it's important that we voice it that way. Um, you should always see in cadential 6-4s, there will be a note that hangs over. It'll stay the same unless there's a 7th chord involved. And then there's always going to be a 6-4 
dropping down to a 5.3. It should be a nice, easy, smooth voicing when you're doing these. Don't jump around, um, otherwise that's going to create all sorts of issues. Thank you. <laughs>